Hello and guten Tag. My name is Martin Krausch and I'm a senior systems engineer at Brokey Germany. So, as usually, first of all, my apologize for my maybe hands and there funny sounding German accent. Today I would like to show you how to configure virtual LANs, so called VLANs, and basic routing features on our Brocade i6-7000 series. VLANs segment ports into separate broadcast and multicast domains. They are used by switches operating at the Open Systems Interconnection Model Layer 2. So switches are also named Layer 2 devices. Switches have MAC tables so that they know what client is attached to a port or VLAN. And the MAC address is the already pre-configured unique address built in into each system. In this example, with a switch with two VLANs, VLAN number 10 and VLAN number 20, and all clients attached to VLAN number 10 can communicate to each other, but they cannot reach clients within VLAN number 20 and vice versa. As we just have learned, VLANs are separated from each other. So if you want to connect a switch A to a switch B, where two VLANs, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 are configured, you would need for each VLAN a dedicated physical link. This may scale for two VLANs, but imagine if you have 100 VLANs. So a better way is to tag Ethernet packets in accordance to IEEE 802.1Q. Ports that are defined as tag ports send VLAN IDs embedded in the packets. On the other side, ports defined as untagged ports, which normally connect to clients, do not send VLAN IDs in the packet. And untagged ports can only belong to one VLAN, whereas tagged ports can belong to many VLANs. As soon as you configure tagging on switch A and switch B, you just need one physical link where both VLANs, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, can be transmitted in parallel. Let's have a closer look at the IEEE 802.1Q packet. Basically, four bytes are squeezed within the Ethernet packet, starting with the tech protocol identifier, which is here always 8100. Um, then we have three bits for priority information, which means you can define up to eight different quality of service values. And uh, the most important field is the VLAN ID field, where you will find 12 bits, uh, which can define up to 4096 different VLANs. There may be some cases where you need to transmit untagged and tagged packets in parallel. For example, if you are using a voice IP telephone, which sends tagged packets, because it needs to be placed within a so-called voice VLAN, and the telephone itself as a second Ethernet port where a PC or a laptop is connected, which sends untagged packets. So, normally a switch would only accept tagged or untagged packets, but not both in parallel, but the broken systems can be configured by defining so called dual mode ports, which allow to receive tagged and untagged packets in parallel and sends the untagged packets into a pre-configured VLAN, whereas the tagged packets already have the VLAN information within the VLAN ID configured in the packet. Let's talk now about a very common use protocol, the spelling tree protocol, STP, which avoids loops in the network caused by broadcast or multicast packets. Imagine you would connect four switches with four physical lines and configure on all ports the same VLAN. Immediately, all switches would forward broadcast and multicast packets on all ports, which would result in a so-called broadcast storm. Broadcast storms have a very heavy impact on your performance because basically the packets are rotating within the network. Spanning tree blocks redundant ports within the network automatically. This means at the moment you would enable spanning tree, one port would be moved into a blocking state in order to avoid a loop. 
There are many different types of spelling tree implementations and covering all of them in detail would go beyond the scope of this video. So here comes just a short summary, uh, beginning with the original spinning tree standard IEEE 802.1D. Later on there was a standard IEEE 802.1W rapid spinning tree, which was much faster and field overtimes have been uh, below one second. Then you have a single spinning tree, SSTP, which creates one single spinning tree domain for all VLANs, which basically means if you have a spinning tree recalculation in one VLAN, all other VLANs also are affected in parallel. Then you have a MSTP, multiple spinning tree, in accordance to IEEE 802.1S, which allows to uh, assign a group of VLANs special SDP instances, and it also supports per VLAN SDP, um, and last but not least, per VLAN spinning tree PVST, uh, which is the simplest way to implement spinning tree because it simply configures one SDP instance per VLAN. But uh, please be aware to check interoperability between different vendors because PVST implementations may differ from one vendor to the other. In case you should need more bandwidth between two neighboring switches, you would have to configure static or dynamic link aggregation groups, because otherwise, by just plugging in additional links, the spanning tree protocol would block these links. Or, if not using spanning tree, you would create an unwanted loop. When configuring an LAG, automatically all physical links are treated as one big logical link. You have the choice between static LAGs and dynamic LAGs, which are using the linked aggregation control protocol LACP. For best practices, I always would suggest to use LACP because LACP PDUs are permanently exchanged between ports on each device and so this protocol is checking the state of the links and when configuring the dynamic LAG, it also checks whether some system settings like port speed is correct on both sides. So, why not switch everywhere and why do you need routing? Routing is needed to connect clients located in different VLANs because otherwise they cannot communicate to each other. Switching simply does not scale large networks because if you have large VLANs, you have a great chance to have lots of unknown unicast traffic, broadcast storms or multicast nightmares. Routing simply helps to deliver data to only where it is needed and restricts local traffic. So with routing you have better control of your network traffic. Virtual Ethernet interfaces, VEs, using IP version 4 or IP version 6 can be configured on VLANs on a router. These routing interfaces can connect clients located in different VLANs, but unknown unicast, broadcast and multicast traffic stays local. Routers are operating at the OSI layer 3 and they have so-called ARP tables. So they basically know what IP addresses are assigned to MAC addresses. As soon as you configure the interfaces, clients on VLAN 10 can reach clients on VLAN 20. When connecting two routers, like within this example, router A and router B, how should clients from VLAN number 20 with the interface 20 know about clients within VLAN number 10 with the interface number 10? because these subnets are not defined locally on the corresponding routers. First of all, you would have to configure so-called transfer VLAN. Here, VLAN 30, connecting both routers within one logical subnet. Routers may exchange routes from the locally connected subnets to each other with the help of dynamic routing protocols like OSPF which stands for Open Shortest Path First. 
which is very helpful within large networks. Within small networks, you would need so-called static routes, which simply define a next hop router for a destination network, unknown to the local router. In this example, you would have to define a static route on router A, which points to the subnet within VLAN 10 and has a destination next hop router the VE interface 30 on router B and vice versa we would have to configure on router B a static route pointing at VLAN 20 with the interface 20 and as the next hop router the V interface of router A within VLAN 30. And now clients from VLAN 20 can communicate with clients from VLAN 10. A special static route is a so-called default route, which simply means for every request to a subnet, the router does not know it will send to a special next stop router defined within this default route. This is very helpful within large networks. You don't have to configure a lot of static routes within each router, but just pointing them to a centralized backbone router which knows all routes and has, for example, a connection to the internet. When using DHCP, the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, you may experience that not all clients get an IP address when booting up. For example, if you have configured a DHCP server within VLAN 20, all clients attached to VLAN 20 will get an IP address, but all clients connected to router B within VLAN 10 won't get an IP address because the DHCP request will stay within the VLAN. What you will have to configure is a so-called IP helper address. The IP helper address has to be configured at the V interface 10 from router B and it's just pointing to the DHCP server address. So router B knows whenever it receives a DHCP request to forward this request to the DHCP server located at router A within VLAN 20. Please take care to set up so-called scopes on the DHCP server as VLAN 20 and VLAN 10 will get different IP addresses from different IP subnet spaces. Configuring VLANs on the box is quite easy by using the integrated graphical web management. You have just to log into the box using your user credentials. And on the left side, you will see an area called monitor. And you basically can access information from the box details about stacking, modules uh, and neighbors, for example, and what kind of uh, utilization on the ports is available. And uh, just scrolling down, you can see a second area called configure. And here you can change settings of the system. So, you would like to add VLANs to the system. You go down to VLAN and port. And you can see here a default VLAN already exists and we would like to add two, for example, additional VLANs. The first VLAN we will give a logical number 10 and a name test VLAN 10 we would like to enable rapid spinning tree by default. Click on add and now we can add additional ports, for example, uplink ports, the port 1 slash 2 slash 1 and the port 1 slash 2 slash 3 as tagged uplink ports and as untagged access ports for example the port range um, from port 30 up to port 39 okay click finish you see second VLAN has been created automatically so you can see here the port range are just attached to the newly created VLAN has been removed from the default VLAN number one. Um, just to show 
how to create a second VLAN, VLAN number 20 for example, um, give it a name, test VLAN 20, enable rapid spanning tree, click add, click also, I would like to attach uplink ports, the same are used by creating VLAN number 10. And here I'm using a different port range. For example, um, the ports 40 up to 48. Click Add, click Finish, and the two VLANs are created. So what you can see here is that these two uplink ports are tagged, but if we're looking to VLAN number one, they are missing because VLAN number one always transmits frames in an untagged way. So you have to modify these uplink ports and to configure so-called dual mode ports. How to do this? Go to modify VLAN, modify ports, and you can see here we have no dual mode ports configured yet. I would like to change this and click OK, I would to configure dual mode port 1 slash 2 slash 1 and 1 slash 2 slash 3. Click on apply and now these ports are configured as dual mode ports, as you can see here. We can also have a look at the configuration by connecting to the box via Secure Shell and have a look how the configuration looks like. And here you can see by typing in show run that now we have configured two VLANs, VLAN number 10, VLAN number 20 with tagged and untagged ports and public spanning tree enabled by default. Um, what you can also see by scrolling down that now the ports 1 slash 2 slash 1 and 1 slash 2 slash 3 are configured as so-called dual mode ports. In order to configure a link aggregation, just go down to configure and then VLAN link aggregation, select what type of link aggregation you would like to use. I select dynamic using LACP, click apply. Automatically a logical number will be selected. You may change this if you want, don't change this here. Um, give the link aggregation a logical name like um, backbone black for example and then you have to select which ports you would like to add to this link aggregation and what should be the primary port. So when configuring something which is used for link aggregation you only have to configure it on the primary port and all the other ports will follow the configuration. Just say add. So the link aggregation has been configured click show and at the moment it's still undeployed and in order to activate the link aggregation just click on deploy. I would like to show you also the configuration on the box itself just by typing in show running config and you see here a link aggregation has been established with two ports and as a primary port, the port 1 slash 2 slash 1 has been selected. If you want to see further details here uh, about the link aggregation, just type in show lag. And you see that the link aggregation has been successfully established on these two ports. It's operational. Everything is working fine. In order to configure routing interfaces to the VLANs, just go down to VLAN port. 
and now you have to click on modify VLAN. Here you can select a router interface, for example, as we are talking about VLAN number 10, I would also select router interface number 10. Say OK. Now router interface number 10 is assigned to this VLAN number 10. We are doing the same for VLAN number 20. So again, select router interface same number 20, click finish. So now we have created two associations to these two VLANs. For VLAN number one, the router interface already exists. This is the inbent router interface. So the next thing we have to do is to create IP addresses for these router interfaces. You see here for the management out of band port and the VLAN number one two router interfaces already are existing. Um, just click on add. You see here we have router interface number 10 and uh, we give it an IP address of 10 and a subnet mask. You could also select whether you would like to configure a secondary IP address. That means you can configure more than one IP address to one VLAN, which we do not do here. Just click on Add, click on Show, you see the second router interface is now established uh, just for the router interface with the number 20. Type in another IP address, the same subnet mask, and click on Add. And you can see here now we have created two router interfaces and from this point on you can now route between VLAN number 10 and VLAN number 20. To add a static route to the system, just go to IP and then to General. And here, click on Static Route. You see one default route already is configured on the system. And you can add another static route for example, to reach the network 192.168.30.0, the network mask 255.255.255.0, go to the address 192.168.1.0. Hundred eighty-six. Just as an example, click Add, click Show, and here you see the newly added static route. Just by going back to the command line interface, I would like to show you the configuration on the box. By show Run, so you can see here, of course, the two. VLANs number 10 and number 20 with the two router interfaces. Um, then the new static route. And last but not least, the router interfaces with the corresponding IP addresses. As you have seen, setting up VLANs and basic IP routing makes sense even within small environments. In my next video, part 5, I would like to give you an introduction to Power over Ethernet. But for today, I would like to thank you for your time and say goodbye and Auf Wiedersehen.